Welcome to our number seven series. A fact unknown to many Bible readers is that the Bible contains numeric codes that reveal the prophetic mysteries of God's preeminent plans. The book of Revelation contains the golden key to these codes, the number seven. The number seven unlocks the symbolic portrayals of angels, demons, churches, and principalities on heaven's side. In my teachings, I will work to unveil the secrets behind the holy number. Welcome to episode number eight, The Seven Praises. The seven praises of Revelation are expressions of worship and adoration to God, the Lamb, Jesus Christ, by various groups of heavenly beings, such as angels, elders, and living creatures. They are found in different chapters of the book of Revelation, and they usually consist of seven attributes of truths that are ascribed to God and the Lamb, such as blessing, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, and might. Three primary examples of the seven praises of Revelation are Revelation chapter 5, verse 12. The angels, elders, and living creatures praised the Lamb, saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Revelation 7, 12. The angels, elders, and living creatures praised God, saying, Amen. Blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might to be to our God forever and ever. And finally, Revelation chapter 15, verses 3 through 4. The saints who overcame the beast praise God, saying, Great and marvelous are the works, the Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the saints. Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? 
for you alone are holy. For all the nations shall come and worship before you, for your judgments have been manifested. The seven praises of Revelation reflect the perfection and majesty of God and the Lamb, and the gratitude and reverence of the redeemed and the heavenly hosts. They also anticipate the final victory and consummation of God's kingdom, when every creature will join in the choirs of praise to the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Whether you believe it or not, when indwelt believers arrive in heaven, each is going to be in the ranks of those who sing praises unto the King of Kings. One single fact always remains. Believers will spend eternity praising God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit with eternal triumph and praise. All will praise our husband Jesus, directly as the one who has redeemed authentic Christians. Worship on earth is a rehearsal of sorts to ready us for the eternal mindset of the seven praises. The most honorable and highest privilege for God's selected bride for his son is to exalt him with continual praise. After all, he is the source and empowered one to receive our praises. Throughout eternity, when we praise, we are going to be singing and shouting songs of rejoicing to the Lamb of God, our beloved husband. Our eternal attitude will be in thanksgiving of God the Father, delivering us unto a Redeemer and Lord who is now called the Lion of Judah. The tribe of Judah holds a special significant place in the heart and mind of God the Father for several reasons. First, prominent leadership. Descendants from Jacob's fourth son, Judah, this tribe became a prominent leader among the Israelites. Judah's proposal to sell Joseph into slavery set in motion the events leading to Joseph's rise in Egypt, which happens to be the Old Testament prophetic reveal of Jesus returning to rule the nations in his 1,000-year reign on earth. Secondly, blessings and prophecies. At the end of Jacob's life, he gave the greatest and most holy blessing to Judah. It was prophesied that the Messiah, Yahshua, Jesus, would come from among its members. However, when he arrived by his birth through Mary, his own descendants were the ones who crucified him. This single act ignited God disciplining Israel to this very hour. Next in line, we have the Davidic line. The tribe of Judah produced the great kings David and Solomon. The reign of King David of Judah marked a significant departure from Israel's earlier wickedness. Due to this significant fact, David will sit at Jesus' side during the 1,000-year reign of the earth in the end. Finally, the birth of the Messiah. Ultimately, the true significance of the tribe of Judah was not in the kings who reigned in Judah or the many battles they won, but in the fulfillment of God's divine plan to provide a savior for the whole world. Since in the end, all Jews will maintain their denial of Yahshua, Jesus, as their promised savior, only the 144,000 pure bloodline descendants, 10,000 from each tribe, will embrace Yahshua as their savior in the final hours of the Antichrist seven-year reign. 
Contained within Revelation 5.12, we find the seven praises written in one statement. Revelation 5.12 says, Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. The seven praises reflect the perfection and majesty of God and the Lamb and the gratitude and reverence of the redeemed and the heavenly hosts. They also anticipated the final victory and consummation of God's kingdom when every creature will join in the chorus of praise to the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, of course. This is demonstrated in the seven worthy reflections of the Lamb, who was slain. Number one, power. God's power in its entirety was given from the throne of God, the Father, to his son, Yahshua, Jesus. This power was invested in him the very moment he came back to life in the tomb. Number two, riches. The riches of Jesus Christ are not material or worldly wealth, but rather spiritual and eternal. They encompass his divine nature, his wisdom, his power, his love, his grace, and his promise to eternal life to those who believe in him. Thus, God gave these riches to his son to impart the same riches to his bride as a co-heir of the grace of the Father. Number three, the wisdom of Jesus Christ is profound and divine, transcending human understanding. It is reflected in his teachings, parables, and actions recorded in the New Testament. His wisdom guides us toward truth, himself, in truth, love, and righteousness, offering insights into the character and nature of his Father, God, the kingdom of heaven, and the path of salvation. The wisdom of Jesus Christ illuminates the spiritual truths once indwelt by the Holy Spirit that underpin our existence and provide a life compass for us to navigate our lives. It is a treasure for all who become indwelt by his life for understanding and spiritual growth. Number four, strength. The strength of Jesus Christ is both physical and spiritual. His physical strength was demonstrated through his endurance of the crucifixion, one of the most brutal forms of execution. His spiritual strength is even more profound. Despite facing temptation, Jesus remained sinless and obedient to God the Father's will. His strength is also reflected in his teachings, his compassion towards others, while being mistreated, and his ultimate sacrifice for humanity's sin to the grace of his Father. Number five, honor. The honor of Jesus was given by his Father is simply unparalleled and divine. As the Son of God, he is honored in heaven and on earth. His life of perfection obedience to God his selfless acts of love, his profound teachings, and his ultimate sacrifice on the cross all attest to his extraordinary honor. Jesus Christ lived a life of humility and service, yet he is exalted as King of kings and Lord of lords. His honor is not of this world, but it is an internal honor bestowed upon him by God the Father. The honor of Jesus Christ is a testament to his divine nature and his profound love for humanity. 
Number six, the glory imparted by his father, Jesus became the divine and eternal reflection of the glory of God. As the son of God, he embodied the fullness of God's glory. His life, death, and resurrection reveal the depth of his love and the extent of his sacrifice, truly reflecting his glorious nature. His glory is further revealed through his teachings, miracles, and his promise of eternal life to those who believe in him. The glory of Jesus Christ transcends human understanding, offering hope, love, and salvation to all. It is a glory that shines brightly, illuminating the path to God and transforming the lives of believers. Finally, number seven, blessing. Jesus the Christ is the ultimate blessing to humanity and all those in heaven. His life, teaching, sacrifice, and resurrection provide a pathway to reconciliation with God, offering hope, love, and a promise of eternal life. Through his grace, believers are empowered to live a life of love and service by releasing his life in and through each indwelt believer. The blessing of Jesus Christ extends beyond this life into eternity, making him the greatest blessing anyone can receive. After the rapture, all authentic believers will share in Jesus' blessing for life eternal. So there you have it, the seven praises in Christ Jesus. Praising Jesus Christ is a heartfelt response to those filled with the Holy Spirit. If a believer radiates his love, grace, and sacrifice through their daily expressions, we reveal the greatest revelation of all eternity. His teachings have guided countless individuals to receive his indwelling life, his sacrifice on the cross, an act of ultimate love, has provided a path to reconciliation with God and the promise of eternal life he promised to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles. His resurrection is a testament to his victory over sin and death. These extraordinary acts of love and sacrifice make Jesus Christ worthy of praise today and throughout eternity. By praising him, believers acknowledge his divine existence and nature, express gratitude for his blessings, and affirm their faith in his indwelling life within his bride. The act of praising Jesus Christ is not only an expression of gratitude for selecting his bride, but also a means to draw closer to him and experience his love and grace more deeply. Until next time.